so hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i will be covering problem c that was build permutation from round 812 also i would really appreciate a like on this video as it will motivate me more to make more editorials like these uh, yeah so that was it for the intro so let's start with the problem so in the problem we have been given integers uh, from 0 1 2 3 up to n minus 1 that is we have been given n integers right from 0 up to n minus 1 we want to permutate these we want to permutate these in such a way that let's call the permutation p we want to permutate these into permutation p such that let's call it p0 p1 p2 up to pn minus 1 such that for every index i in the permutation for every index i in the permutation p of i plus i should be a perfect scale right so i hope the problem is clear so given n integers from 0 up to n minus 1 we want to permutate them in a permutation p such that for every index i in the permutation p of i plus i should be a perfect scale so how can we do this I think the very first observation that helped me solve this problem was this one. So I will start with the basic observation. So let's say that your n minus 1 is a perfect scale already. For example, let's say your n minus 1 is a perfect scale already. Right? Then you can always make a permutation of the following type. You can always make a permutation of the following type. n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, so on up to 0. Right? Because index here is 0, index here is 1, index here is 2, so on up to n minus 1. So as n minus 1 plus 0, right, so this is equal to n minus 1, which is which we know is a perfect scale. Similarly, n minus 2 plus 1, n minus 2 plus 1, which is equal to n minus 1 again. And we already know that n minus 1 is a perfect scale. So the same thing applies to the whole permutation. And for every index, p of i plus i is a perfect scale because n minus 1 is a perfect scale. Right? So the following thing gave me an idea. As you can see, we can make a permutation in a decreasing order, right? We can make a permutation in the decreasing order. So let's say that you have been given some n now. You have been given some n where n minus 1 is not a perfect scale. n minus 1 is not a perfect scale. So you can always find some integer x. You can always find some integer x such that n minus 1 plus x is equal to a perfect scale. Right? And this x will always lie in 0 up to n minus 1. Right? So given some integer n minus uh, n minus 1, which is not a perfect scale, you can always find some integer x from range 0 to n minus 1, such that your n minus 1 plus x is a perfect scale. Why so? Because there's a theorem here uh, on math stack explain you can see here that there is always a perfect scale between n and 2n, right? So it is a known theorem. So for some given integer n minus n minus one, which is not a perfect scale, you can always find some integer x, which is a perfect scale, right? So we can use this to build up a permutation recursively. How so? So how can we use this to solve our problem? Let's see that. So you have some, you have a permutation, right? You have index zero here, one here, two here, so on up to index x minus one. Then you have your index x, right? And as you know, your n minus 1 plus x is a perfect scale. Your n minus 1 plus x is a perfect scale. So you can place your n minus 1 here, right? Similarly, for index x plus 1, you can place n minus 2 and so on, right? For index n minus 1, you can place a x here, right? So as you can see here, again, you have here n minus 1 plus x, right? Which we know is a, a perfect scale. Similarly, for index n minus 2 plus x plus 1, it will again give us n minus 1 plus x, which is a perfect scale, right? So now you have solved a suffix. Now you have solved some part of the suffix, right? And you have placed your integers from x. You have placed your integers from x up to n minus 1. So now you are just left with integers 1, 2, 3, so on up to x minus 1. So as you can see, you are you have kind of like made a similar problem, right? First you had first you had n integers and you had to place them into n slots, right? But now you have placed some of them and now you have x integers and you have to place them into x slots, right? So as you can see, this kind of things about recursion, right? 
so first of all you had a function let's say you had to solve solve for n then you found some integer x such that n minus 1 plus x was a perfect square and then you place those integers and now you're just left with x integers and x norms right so you found some integer x such that n minus 1 plus x was a perfect square and now you have re now you have uh, reduced your problem from solving for n to solving for x similarly for x you can again find some integer y you can again find some integer y such that x minus 1 plus y is a perfect square so now you are left with some permutation of size x 0 1 2 3 so on up to x you can again find some integer y such that x minus 1 plus y is a perfect square using the same theorem as i sh showed you using the same theorem right using the same theorem you can find one more integer y where y lies between 0 and x minus 1 such that x minus 1 plus y is a perfect square and then you can again place x minus 1 y here x minus 2 y plus 1 so on up to y okay. then you can again solve a suffix of this and now you are again left with some y integers and you can again keep on solving this so you first solved for n found some integer x such that n minus 1 plus x is a perfect square Then you have to solve for x then you have to again solve for y and so on right here n minus 1 plus y is a perfect square until you have to solve for 0 when you get your value equal to 0 then it means you have solved everything and you can just return back so that is the solution to the problem and uh, the main thing here is here was that you can always find these x and y right because you can always find these x and y because there is always a perfect square between n and 2n so you can always find a valid x and y so the answer is always possible right so there there is never an impossible case for this so as you can see here they are they have written that if the answer exists uh, print p otherwise minus 1 but, but the answer will be never minus 1 right because i have shown you that you can always find valid in, uh, you can always find valid indexes x and y and you can always go from a bigger index to a smaller index and you can keep solving it until you reach zero right so that is the solution and i think it is simple enough so if you want to see the code for this i can show you the code also so here is the code so first of all i take in my n and then i build up my answer which is consists of minus one right uh, the following statement is not needed i can just comment this out so then i uh, do a recursion for my index n and I pass in my vector answer. So when I uh, re recurse for n, I will check if n is equal to 0, that is I have reached my base case and I don't have to do anything uh, anymore, I can just return. Otherwise my current index is equal to n and I will find the next scale. I will find the next scale that is needed, right? And then I can use this get next scale function to find the value of x. So how can I use this? So I, I will explain my get next scale function. So we need to find n minus 1 plus x equal to perfect square. We want to find n minus 1 plus x equal to perfect square. I already know the value of n minus 1, right? And I can find this perfect square also. So I can using these two, I can find the value of x. So how can I find uh, how can I find this perfect square? I can first of all calculate square root of n minus 1. So I, I, let's call it square root. I can first of all find square root of n minus 1, right? And then I can check if square root into square root is equal to n minus 1 then my n1 n minus 1 is a perfect square already then my, then my n minus 1 is a perfect square already so then i can change then then i can change my perfect square equal to n minus 1 and my x will be equal to 0 otherwise if my square root into square root is not equal to n minus 1 then that means that my n minus 1 is smaller than a perfect square right then then i will uh, change my square root into square root plus 1 right then my square root plus 1 into square root plus 1 will be more than n minus 1 right so then i can insert this in my perfect square then i can insert this in my perfect square and i can use this to find my value of x right so basically you have to find the perfect square that is larger than n minus 1 and is closest to n minus 1 right so my perfect square is nothing my perfect square is closest perfect square 
larger than n minus one, right? So just, so you just find square root of n minus one, and if and if square root to square root is equal to n minus one, then that means your n minus one is a perfect square. Otherwise, your largest square uh, or the or the closest square larger than this will be square root plus one into square root plus one. So you can see in the code here, uh, code here also. I first of all found square root of x, and if current into current is equal to x, then the answer is x. Otherwise, the answer is current plus one into current plus one. So I will use this to find the next closest square, and then my x here my difference is is my x. Then that is equal to need. That is my uh, the value that I need. Uh, the, the 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 perfect square minus and minus one, right? Then I can just my fill out my array, right? Like I did here. Then I can just fill out my array uh, from index x, right? So starting from index x up to index n, I can fill in my array. And then now I know my value of x. Then I can use this to, to recurse further. And in the end, I can just print out my array answer. You don't need this minus one case because the answer is never impossible. So the answer is al always possible. So you don't need to think about the impossible cases. So in the end, just print out your array, and that is the solution. And if you guys have a doubt, feel free to leave in the comments or join my Discord server, and I'll be more than happy to answer your doubts. See you guys in the next video. Also, if you guys don't know, Continuing Newton School is offering a full stack development course. The course is uh, over six months long, and it is totally based on pay after placement model, and you don't have to pay anything. There is zero hidden fees, there is zero upfront fees, and they are granting you a minimum package of rupees five lakhs. And the average package is rupees seven lakhs, and the highest package is over rupees twenty six lakhs. So it is a very great opportunity. Also, all their mentors are from top MNCs like Google, Flipkart, Zomato, etc. Also, they will get you placed into the top MNCs as well, like Google, Flipkart, Zomato. Uh, so uh, you can learn from the mentors that are working at those companies, and you can land a job at those companies yourselves. Also, you don't need to worry if you guys think that yeah, I'm not coding, 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 I'm not uh i highly vouch for this and uh, if you guys want to sign up there will be link down below and you can go and sign up from there so yeah you know be sure to sign up for this and i will see you in the next video bye bye